Hi, this is Matt with CustomCarGrills.com. In this video, I'm going to show you one of our Toyota Tacoma grill installations. The first thing to do is remove the factory grill and then take off the outer grill shell. Next, I suggest using a handsaw to remove the vertical bars from the factory grill. Then, use a Dremel to cut off the sides of the factory grill. During this step, it's okay to leave a little bit of excess. This is just a rough cut, and later we're going to refine it down to the exact size that we need to install the mesh insert. If you don't have a rotary tool, such as a Dremel, you can also use the handsaw that we used in the previous step to get these cuts accomplished. Now we should be able to remove the bulk of the inner part of the factory grill. The next step is best done using a cutoff wheel. We want to cut a border slightly outside where the grill tab openings are. This will allow us enough clearance for the mesh to be installed on the back of the chrome or painted factory grill. This would be a good time now to see how the outer shell lays in and remove any more excess that may be showing through. And now that we've removed the tab openings, there's really no sense in keeping the tabs themselves. They're just gonna hinder the grill installation. So I'm gonna use a pair of nippers here and simply cut off the back of them. This should leave a really nice clean surface for the mesh to flushly mount. With the inner tabs removed, you'll need to rely on the bottom screws as well as the top tabs to hold the bulk of the grill together for the time being. With the way that this installation works, the top part will actually slide in between the two pieces of the grill frame. The bottom part will actually not fit in between the two pieces. Instead, you need to rest the mesh on top of the back of the grill. There is a crucial bend in the mesh that needs to be made in order to lift the mesh up in order to install this properly. I'll have a separate set of instructions on how to bend the mesh if yours does not come pre-bent. Once the grill piece is properly formed, now it's time to install it. As noted before, the bottom should rest on the back of the painted or chrome grill shell and the top will be sandwiched in between the painted and the non-painted part. To temporarily hold the grill mesh in place, I'm simply using some cable ties and some foam padding. You want to hold the grill mesh very firmly in place, and this is also a really good time to check for any gaps on the top, the bottom, or the sides. If you notice any gaps, you may need to push the mesh in place, or possibly use a couple more cable ties to hold it firmly against the back. Once you're satisfied with the positioning of the mesh, it's time to go ahead and get it installed. For these types of projects, I like using automotive goop. I'm applying the adhesive in a way where I'm going to get the mesh and the adhesive and the factory grill to all come in contact with each other. This may take a couple layers to build up and once it's dry, it's going to create a really nice good firm bond. Some areas during this installation were difficult to get to. You don't need to go too heavy on the adhesive for the lower portion. It's very important that you don't have any of the adhesive leak through the front, otherwise that may destroy the project. It takes about a day for the goop to cure, and when it has, it should be safe to remove the cable ties. With the cable ties removed, let's go ahead and take a look at our work. I think this looks pretty good, and it wasn't too difficult. It should take maybe a couple hours to get the factory grill gutted and prepped, the mesh install went relatively easy, and the longest part was waiting for the goop to cure. I don't see any gaps on the sides, the top, or the bottom, so I think this is a relatively solid installation. If you like, you can actually add an emblem or letters on top of this to add a little extra flair. We plan on stocking the mesh inserts in the Perf SS style, which was shown in this video, as well as the small hexagon style. Other meshes can be custom cut for this application, so if you have any ideas, please contact me. I hope you like what you saw, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me.